So not everything with keeping reptiles is always fun. The more animals you have, the more problems or potential problems that you're going to have to manage. I'm actually going to show you something that uh, even when you think you're doing everything right, it doesn't always go your way. Okay, this is a lovely, fat looking emerald tree boa. And we can see right here. So, so what the problem was, when it's, this animal is, uh, they're very low on the activity scale. So they are mostly active at night because they're nocturnal. So when they're sitting on a branch, just coiled up all beautiful, you don't realize that maybe something has happened and we have an impaction. Um, I'm gonna tell you this, I don't have a great feeling about this because the problem is up here. And actually, why did this happen? So we have a tall cage, we have water vessel underneath, we also spray the animal, but maybe the animal wasn't drinking enough, we didn't spray it long enough, uh, something happened where it didn't get the no see that it's been drinking. I think it just this is due because the animal was dehydrating itself because it wasn't going down to the water dish, wasn't drinking enough. So, but it was eating great. So it eat a, a good meal, and as it's digesting it, uh, if you have it in a kind of state of dehydration, you know, not knowingly, that will start to impact, and all the poop and all that material will start to kind of. Uh, dry out and it stops moving through the animal. So normal peristalsis, which is going out of the stomach down uh, to, the, to the butt and out, that whole process is uh, interrupted. So I need to get all of that material out, but this is where it gets scary. It also, as it starts to kind of dry out and it starts creating a mass, uh, it needs to be able to move through the GI. And if I try to just start squishing it and trying to manipulate it out, I can tear the gastrointestinal uh, area of this animal. I can tear it, perforate it. And once you do that, you're getting gastrointestinal uh, flora into the body cavity. That is deadly. So um, this animal is definitely stressed out. This animal, fantastic eater. Everything's great. And then all of a sudden, wouldn't eat, looked really fat, and it probably took a little while for my keeper to actually realize that there's a problem. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh no, there's a real problem. And uh, I was able to get some material out. Uh, these uh, emerald tree boas are famous, just like blood pythons. Sometimes they'll uh, plug up at the end with a big uh, urate plug and they won't get all the material out. So first thing I did, I soaked the heck out of the snake for over 24 hours. See, see right there, remember the pinch test? Okay, even though this animal's been soaking for well over 24 hours, it's not fully hydrated in my opinion. You don't just give them a couple drinks or soak them in water and they just magically get better. So they have to get all that moisture into their body. So what we're gonna do, I'm going to uh, tube this animal. So I'm gonna tube the bitey part so I don't have to deal with the, if it tries to bite. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, take a catheter and I'm gonna take a large, uh, syringe, I'm going to fill it with lactated ringers. So it's essentially sterile water with a little bit of saline in there. And I'm going to put it up her butt and I'm going to move it around, see if I can get any material up. But at the very least, when I do this, I get all that uh, fluid in there and the animal can then pull that all through its gastrointestinal system It speed up hydration. And this might take a couple days to resolve if I can get rid of it. The animal's still strong and stuff like that, but I am really worried because I started manipulating it with my hands. And I was like, oh my God, this is really hard. All right, so we're gonna do it. So you kind of point it towards the spine at like a 45 degree. And you do not want to push when you have resistance. Oh, did I mention, go to a vet. Vets know how to do this easy. A vet has all the knowledge. They certainly know what happens when you make a mistake. So, I'm just showing you something that we do, but you know, a vet's great. This is wonderful. It's going up and you really do not want to push. I cannot say enough, state enough that if I perforate any of this intestine, it's going to cause problems. Okay. So I, I've gone to a point where I don't feel like I can kind of get it any further. We're, we're not, we're not doing really anything invasive as far as, you know, biology wise we're putting this into her butt but we're not like we're not getting into the bloodstream we're not doing anything as long as there's no 
perforations and there's no blood or anything like that. So I'm just I'm doing this because I want to get I want to get some uh, ringers in there. I mean, this is what they do to old people, man. They get they get poop stuck in their butt because I want, I don't know about that. I don't uh, want to know, know about that. About the elderly, no, then. no. Okay, I'd like to get a whole bunch into this snake. So that was sixty cc's. I'll tell you, the lubricant is making my life hard. So, no, 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 no. You don't want. That's going to stop it. <laughs> right there. She's going to pop that tube. Wow, she popped that tube out like nothing. So, there's a couple of different ways you could do this. I can leave this in the animal for quite some time before I even investigate if I can pull anything out. And the good thing about that, that is going to get a bunch of fluid into the snake. Uh, and that fluid is going to get picked up because, uh, you know, hydration is key. You know, you have an animal that isn't doing well. It's not, you know, it's, it's dealing with something like that. Hydration is one of the first things that you're going to check for. Mm-hmm. So we have this big kind of collective mass, all right? And by me adding fluid up there, I want to see if I can break that up as much as possible. Remember, this is not just a matter of you massaging it and getting it to break apart and it just magically comes out. You have to realize that you're dealing with the intestine of this animal. And that is just oh, such a substantial... So intestines on people are all in there, all jumbled up and stuff like you know. Yeah. So these are these are these are they go pretty much straight straight along. That makes it quite easy for you to do this though. So these are animals that uh, almost I always say they almost do best on like neglect, which means you just do the minimal care to keep it nice and happy, but don't overfeed it, don't dicker it with too much because you'll cause it stress. Overfeeding, you have all this food going in there since they don't move around a lot. They tend to not defecate as often. A lot of times raining on them causes them to become active and causes that to happen. And usually you um, you feed it, it digests it, and then you kind of set up your schedule 14 days later, you know, it defecates and then you can feed it again. So maybe kind of uh, just didn't didn't get that cycle exactly right. Kevin's yeah, afraid he's gonna get bit so we're putting tape on the top. Yeah, guys, I'm really afraid. Actually, I have huge teeth. Yeah, I don't like, and they already got that muscle behind it. Okay, let's see. So this animal is just actually. That's, you know, I I call everything a girl. It's a boy. Excuse me. I just tend to. That's just what I do. It's. I think it's a endearment. Okay. All right. So we got all of this fluid in there. The fluid is going to, in theory, help lubricate. Plus, I really just want to work that material into something that I can get down. So, one thing I am worried, if things are twisted and I am unable to get any of this material going and we got or maybe there's another reason I don't even know it's really it doesn't want to move down so that that is my worry so I think what we want to do is if I can get this animal stable this is potentially if it could be strong enough to actually survive a surgery, then I have the problem of actually finding somebody that knows anything. The only person would be Greg Mertz, and we're right at the holiday time. So one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this uh, animal some water and 
Uh, actually, oral, I'm going to give it mineral oil and water solution. And the idea is we're going to add something to uh, add uh, lubricant and uh, help to actually soften the stool. But we're going to go through the front part. So it's actually going to have to go all the way through the GI down into the lower part of the intestines where this uh, material has uh, solidified. I don't like doing this. I just want to let you guys know. This is the bad side. This is where... Like, I'm now upset. It, like, we went from, okay, you know, the animal's acting, you know, a little bit, whatever. And then uh, Barb alerted me to this. We soaked it. This animal's been actually, actually, this animal's been soaking for a couple days, actually, thinking about this. Because it wasn't just 24 hours. Okay, what are you doing? I'm going to take some mineral oil. Why are we using mineral oil, Kevin? So, this will help soften everything. Uh, it's going to soften and lubricate. And so let's say we're going to use about 10, 10 cc's. So now we're going to have to restrain this guy. I don't want to give him too much because this guy's already in a lot of stress. This is really going to stress him out. This is stressing me out. We want to, you know, I like to try to do this as passively as possible. And the reason why I'm putting this tube down a ways, I want to get it towards the stomach. If I put it just in its mouth, it has its glottis there. So that's its breathing tube, which connects to the lung. So see that right there? We got it. So we got it down. So as I start putting it down there, it kind of, I start getting some friction. I can add a little bit of fluid. I push a little bit down. I literally think we got we got something twisted all up in this this animal's system. So we're gonna try to get this down. This animal's fighting me, so it's so I'm getting into into its stomach. I expecting it to probably spit up a lot. All right, so now we're gonna put him back in his cage, and uh, hope for the better. I have one chance of a vet that I could contact. He's a couple hours away. Um, I have to go through a COVID test. I got to do all that. If I can even get them, but the, if this animal doesn't become stable, this animal's not stable. This animal is actually stressed out and it's weak. To do surgery on an animal at that point, I kind of miss the window. And because this animal's secretive, it just sits on a branch. The animal is still actively sitting on a branch today and it's hiding. It just looks like a big fat animal. But Barbara noticed it didn't eat his last meal. And this is a fantastic eater. Started thinking maybe, you know, his little thing. So we put it in an incubator. We started soaking it, getting it hydrated. I got some uh, urates out of it. Got a bunch of fluid out of it. But the, the material, I didn't get that out. And the fact that I'm not able to get any of the material out as I've done, you know, my basic uh, enema type stuff, it's got me worried. You know, my hope was to, once we realized that there was a problem with the animal, because the animal's perched, looked like a big, fat, perfect snake, and then uh, the person that was taking care of him put him in a soak. Uh, we had it soak for two days, almost, almost two days. And by the time, you know, I understood what was going on, I started realizing, oh, we have a major problem. So uh, yesterday, I was working on it, and... I needed I need to get this animal operated on, but it needs to be stable. You cannot expect an animal that's crashing to actually survive through anesthesia, through any of that stuff being intubated, any of that stuff like that. So heavy procedures, the animal has to have a certain level of life. This animal was crashing so fast, and uh, just within you know less than 24 hours, the thing the thing declined rapidly and died. But at the very least, I want to go inside this animal because. You can see this animal, there's a massive amount of material still in this animal. But what caused this, this material that we got about this far and I could not gain any um, relief as far as getting it further down there. And I knew that at that point, you know, the simple basic type of 
management was uh, beyond my skill set, so I'd have to get into a vet and get it to operate. But we didn't get that opportunity, so things like this happen. But let's go inside and actually see what I'm going to find. All right. So what we're going to do? So we're going to do. This is just a. We're going to do a non-inclusive gross necropsy where we're going to be looking at a bunch of stuff. I'm really interested in what's down in the lower GI. What's actually responsible for possibly this blockage that ultimately uh, caused this animal to become poisoned and toxed out. So. I'm cutting, keeping close to the ventral scales and not cutting in very deep. Pretty much, this was a very healthy snake. And uh, in some cases, things just go wrong. So I'm interested. So we come down here, we come to here. And look at this. This, now it's going back up here, okay? It should be going that way. So we've done a complete U-turn, and this is what I was, this is why I wasn't getting anywhere. So remember, the intestine is essentially this big tube, all right? So intestines into the gastrointestinal system, so. Okay, so what I'm just doing is I'm releasing a lot of uh, membranes and connective tissue to So this is heavily digested material. So this, if we had known what was going on before, a veterinarian would knock this guy out and then go through the body cavity wall, get into this part of the intestine. Oh, this is amazing. This is, this is so substantial. So, so now, so this thing was all twisted up, okay? This was essentially like that. So somewhere along the line, earlier in the time of the snake, it got twisted. So you, it, once it twists like that, we're in a... How the hell can it twist? How does that happen? It, I, I, I don't really, I don't really know. I'm... Is it like dogs where their stomach can like flip yep, over? There you go. Perfect. So you're talking about a sedentary animal that sits on a perch. So when you're sitting on a perch, you're locating pressure on a unique little area. So, you know, per square inch, you have the whole animal's weight, all the activity that's sitting there, and maybe that sets them up. This was, this was definitely outside of my scope of uh, being able to um, accomplish anything. And the only way we're going to accomplish anything is for surgery. And sometimes animals don't show you enough have wonderful animals and they're all set up in the same manner they're fine but occasionally you know just like i just have a live litter of emeralds and a live litter of emeralds and i have a completely dead litter of emeralds even though i think that they're set up the same something just didn't work so i had a dead litter and uh you know i'm always learning i didn't learn anything there because it was set up where there was other animals having litters uh same way with this thing set up uh being more aware, maybe earlier on now that we've seen this, I've never seen this before, so. I know you've talked about it, <clears throat> you haven't seen it though. And I think it's important that you say, uh, this is one, this is one animal, Kevin has so many animals, guys. I think you guys look at our YouTube videos, you're like, everything dies at NERD. No, a lot of everything lives at NERD, and they, these are the unfortunate but cases. But remember guys, I want to educate, I want to learn, I want to share things with you, and I want to show you maybe the not great things. I don't, I don't like doing this, it's much easier to not show you any of it. But this might actually help somebody someday. And uh, getting me to talk about it means that I actually have to process it. I'm a baby. 
about my animals when they die. I get really upset and I want to disconnect myself. And uh, I don't actually, I think I sometimes rob myself of, of those learning experiences. And you know, just stuff, how stuff goes is, is, uh, is tough. But anyways, we wanted to show you something. I would have loved to show you a great outcome, but this is definitely outside of what we can actually accomplish. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!